Okay, so for this lesson today, what we're going to get into is transformers. Transformers is a big part of your electrical systems in HVAC. You're going to see them on your uh, central air systems. You're going to find them on oil burners. They are a pretty big vital part of how a, a system actually operates. So for a transformer, it really operates off of two basic principles. It operates off of the principle that electricity can be used to generate a magnetic field. And it also operates off of the principle that a magnetic field can be used to actually induce electricity. So a transformer transfers AC voltage from one coil of wire to another coil of wire through the use of a magnetic field. The process that is known to transforming or transferring electricity using a magnetic field is actually called induction. So when we look at a <clears throat> transformer, you're going to see a couple wires sticking out on both ends. You're also going to see a magnetic or a iron core, piece of iron, kind of like wrapped around as we see here in this, in this animation. Those two coils of wire, they're placed uh, kind of close together, but they are not touching um, in any way. There's just a small gap of air <clears throat> in between those two. So the electrical source of power <clears throat> is connected to the first coil of wire, and that's going to be called our primary coil or our primary winding. So this red, or sorry, the blue <clears throat> winding right here, this could represent our primary winding. This would be the electrical power supply, the power that's coming into the transformer. We have our iron core, where as we apply electricity to this coil of wire, I am now generating a magnetic field. It is that magnetic field that will now create what we call a magnetic flux through our iron core, which will now transfer that to our secondary side of our winding. See, so the primary coil really generates a magnetic field that is picked up by the secondary coil of wire, which is called either our secondary coil or what we would normally call a secondary winding. The magnetic field generated by that primary winding, it's going to grow and it's going to shrink. Why it grows and shrinks is because of AC. We know that AC alternates from positive to negative 60 times in one second. So when that happens, that magnetic field is going to get intense and it's going to lose intensity. It's going to go back and forth all the time. So when this happens, that secondary winding is going to convert that change in the magnetic field into electricity. So you can see here in this animation that here we have our, our primary winding. Okay, we're generating our magnetic field okay, going around our wires. That magnetic field is then transferred into that iron core that we see here. That iron core will now induce a flow of electricity out on our secondary side. But notice in this, in, in this animation, you notice that there's really not much of a magnetic field that's really coming around on this secondary winding. Why? That's simply because of the fact of that we have our iron core. That iron core is what's really giving us what we're putting out. So step down transformers is the amount of winding or the amount of voltage coming out of the secondary winding of the transformer is dependent on the voltage entering the primary winding as well as the number of turns on each coil. Okay, so if a primary winding has 
100 turns of wire and the secondary winding only has 50, we'll say. The voltage exiting that transformer on the secondary side would be only half the voltage that has entered the transformer. Okay, that type of tr configuration is what we would consider and call a step down transformer. It's taking electricity from the primary side and stepping it down to another voltage. A prime example of a step down transformer in HVAC is a 120 volt primary to a 24 volt secondary. We use a lot of our step down transformers to provide 24 volts of electricity so that we can power up our thermostats, so that we can power up coils on uh, relays and contactors and, and things like that. So step down transformers is really nothing more than a transformer that has more windings on the primary side and less windings on the secondary side. Step up transformers is really just the opposite. Okay, the primary winding, we'll say, has 50 turns, but the secondary winding will have 100 turns. Okay, the voltage coming out of that secondary side of the transformer would actually be twice the amount that was entering the transformer. Okay, so this type of transformer is called a step-up transformer. Now, where do we see step-up transformers? You're going to see step-up transformers on oil burners. We use step-up transformers to send electricity down to the electrodes, which will now ignite the oil. A lot of your uh, step-up transformers that you may see on bur oil burners are typically maybe 120 volt primary and they step up to probably about 10,000 to maybe 14,000 volts of electricity. So that's being done because of the more windings that is on the secondary side. Remember those two principles that a transformer works off of. We have to depend on the amount of electricity that's coming into it, but it also depends on the amount of windings each uh, coil actually has. So transformers are rated by voltage on the primary side and volt amps on the secondary side. So most of the primary voltages that you're going to run into in the world of HVAC is either going to be about 120, 208, 230, maybe 240, um, and 480 volts of electricity. Secondary side of the transformer in the HVAC industry is most common is going to be the 24 volts. Okay, now when we take a voltage reading on a 24 volt transformer, it can kind of range. This is perfectly normal. Uh, usually you are looking for a range anywhere between 24 and maybe 28 volts of electricity. Usually from my experience in, in the field that if I had a 24 volt transformer and I wasn't really getting uh, exactly 24 volts coming out of it, uh, that would be a telltale sign that possibly the secondary side of the transformer is actually starting to break down and the transformers are actually eventually going to fail. Um, I have seen units work with a little bit less than 24 volts and not really seem to have much of a problem. But you're really kind of looking for a range of anywhere between maybe 24 and maybe 28 volts of electricity coming out of that secondary side of the transformer. Now, like I said before, we have uh, ratings on our primary side and volt amps on our secondary. The reason why we have volt amps on our secondary side of our transformer is because you have to remember that 24 volts is considered control voltage. So we're using that 24 volts to control um, components, like I said before, like relays, contactors, solenoids, uh, things like that. So we have to be able to have a transformer that is powerful enough to handle those loads. 
So we have to establish a volt amp rating. So to figure out how many volt amps you are dealing with on the 24 volt side of a transformer, you have to take the secondary voltage, which would be 24 volts, and then you will have to take an amperage reading on the secondary side of that transformer and multiply them together. And that will give you a volt amp rating. When it comes to troubleshooting a transformer, they are relatively simple uh, components to, to troubleshoot. The first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously make sure that you have power going to the primary side of the transformer. Remember, the primary side is over here. Okay, on this animation right here, or on this picture, sorry, you have our primary winding here. This is actually what we would call a multi-tap transformer. If you look on the data plate right here, you see where we have an input. An input, which is 120 volts, which is our white wire. Or, sorry, uh, 120 volts is our, our black or, no, sorry, I can't see that really too well. Common is black. 120 volts is white. 208 is red. And 240 is orange. So this type of transformer that you're seeing here is a multi-tap transformer. This can be wired to different voltages on our primary side. So, for example, if we're using a unit that has a uh, supply voltage of 120 volts, we would connect our black and our white wires so that we would supply 120 volts to the primary. If we were on a unit that was operating off of 208 volts of electricity, we would connect the red and the black wire, and that would give uh, 208 volts of electricity to the primary side, or if we were using 240, we would take orange and black, and that would give us 240 volts of electricity. But if you look on the secondary side, all you have is a blue and a yellow wire. Okay, that's our output. So when we're troubleshooting this sort of stuff, you're going to want to first make sure that you have voltage on the primary side. Because remember, we're using the primary side of the transformer to induce voltage onto the secondary side. So if nothing is going on up here, nothing is going to happen down here. So what you should do is double check and make sure that you have voltage here. Okay, if you have voltage here, you're going to again see if you have voltage here. If there is no voltage on the secondary side, chances are the transformer is uh, no good. But before you condemn a transformer, you're going to want to do a couple other steps. First, you're going to want to see whether or not this fuse right here is popped. Okay? If it is, sometimes you can just re uh, pop it back in and it resets. But the only problem is if this uh, fuse does pop, we're not just going to reset it and walk away. There's a reason why that fuse has popped. Now, if you look, we have a little amperage rating right here, 3.7 amps. That is our volt amp rating. So that's telling us that our secondary side can only handle 3.7 volt amps. Now, volt amps is really not a lot. If this fuse does pop, we have a problem on the secondary side. It could be shorted. We could be over-amping the secondary side. We can have a wiring issue. You have to take a look, and you have to do some digging in to see why that fuse has actually popped. The other thing that you can do is simply shut the power off to the unit, disconnect the wires on your primary and secondary side, and ohm them out individually. Ohm out your primary windings, ohm out your secondary windings. 
if the windings are still good, you will get a resistance reading. You'll get some sort of ohm reading on them. If they're bad, shorted or something like that, you will read OL or zero. Zero would necessarily mean that it's shorted. There's something wrong with the transformer. The transformer is no good, and you have to replace it. When you are replacing a transformer, you want to replace it with a uh, pretty much with the same type of of transformer: 120 volt primary, 24 volt secondary, or 120 volt primary, 10,000 volt secondary. If you're dealing with a step up transformer.